<laughs> uh, we're going to ask, ask Nina from the Prisoners uh, Education Trust, who I can say one of my favourite uh, charities uh, in the sector. And Nina's going to touch on something called Learn a Voice, which I think is a, an amazing concept. Uh, it's not new as such, but let's hear from Nina. Nina. me uh, to come and speak today. As John said, my name is Nina Champion. I'm the project Learning Matters Project Manager of the Prisoners Education Trust. Um, we've only got a short amount of time, so I'm not going to go into what the Trust does, um, but we, a lot of what we do is help <coughs> prisoners to access distance learning courses for subjects and levels that aren't available in prison, but lots of other things as well. And so I've brought some copies of our annual review if you want to find out more. Um, I'm going to discuss two things um, in the next five minutes. First, I'm going to discuss the link between literacy and learn a voice and secondly I'm going to give you some insight into five of the things that prisoners say that they want to change about the prison education system. While I'm speaking though I'd like to be thinking, uh, going back to what John was saying about thinking about actions for later on, of ways that you involve learners or your service users in developing your services or what you could do um, so we can have a bit of a discussion later on and I look forward to getting some of your ideas about how we can develop learn a voice. So Learning Matters project is an advocacy project and it champions prisoner learning in various ways. But one priority we have is to enable prisoner learners to have a voice, both in relation to their own learning needs and what they want to achieve, but also to provide them a medium for using their experiences and ideas to help influencing wider policy, so whether that's within their own prison or actually on a national level as well. Do some of that lobbying that, that Alex was talking about. So it's the role of literacy in developing prisoner learner voice that I want to focus on. And it's also core to English Penn's mission to fight for freedom of expression, and as their website says, to enable voices, especially, especially critical voices, to be heard. I agree with the organisation User Voice that prisoners' voices can add insight, value and answers to many of the system's current problems and failures. For me, developing learner voice is about empowering and enabling prisoners to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. I'm reading this book at the moment by Noel Razor-Smith, who's one of the editors on Inside Time. And yesterday I came across a paragraph um, which says, I had a yearning to get the voice of a prisoner heard by the outside world. I had discovered a love of writing and had plenty to say, but no one was really asking the prisoners what was wrong with the system. We were, and still are, the most disenfranchised minority in this country, and our views on the system generally go unheard or are discounted. So literacy in prison can often be discussed as this kind of narrow concept of learning to read and write, but I'm sure, as everyone here agrees, it goes further than that. Promoting literature and literacy is about learning how to express yourself, developing a wider vocabulary, formulating arguments, seeing things from different points of view, articulating ideas, developing an understanding of self and society. So these skills are crucial to be able to influence change, both personally, locally and nationally. One prison wrote, wrote to the Prisoners Education Trust recently, writing about how starting a journal in prison helped develop his writing skills. And he said, I felt comfortable writing about my problems rather than talking to someone about them. The reality was, I never really trusted anyone. Keeping my problems bottled up was affecting me. I couldn't concentrate and it led to me making stupid decisions. My skills in writing have improved a lot and now I've got the opportunity to change my life when released as I've just been funded by the Prisoners Education Trust to do a distance learning course in freelance journalism. So when you look at ex-prison journalists like Owen James, Mark Johnson, Raphael Rowe or bloggers like Ben Gunn, they're using their literacy skills to help influence the public and policy makers about what works in prisons. And it's all the more authentic because the voice is someone who's been there. So Learning Matters Projects is trying to research and pilot ways of incorporating learner voice and developing and engaging it. So we've been doing surveys at Inside Time. We've submitted prisoners' views to policy consultations. We've taken some prisons to go meet MPs and we're getting MPs to go into prisons. Um, and we've made a short film with only featuring prisoners and ex-prisoners. But we also want to do more, so we, you know, so we want your input about what's going on out there and what we could do. 
In response to our learning matters survey, one prisoner commented that he would change HMPS to HMES, Her Majesty's Educational Service. Um, and to give you a flavour of some of the ideas that prisoners have about how they would change, I've just picked sort of five main themes, and I'm going to get my colleagues Seb, to, to read out the quotes of the quotes. <laughs> yeah. So, firstly, prisoners want more learning opportunities at higher levels and to use e-learning to facilitate this. It's good that inmates learn basic skills, but it stops there, and the opportunity to instill a love of learning is lost, and that is tragic. Um, and then secondly, having access to the internet would be a major leap in the right direction for prison-based learning, opening up a wealth of information. Secondly, prisoners would like learning to be less target-focused. <coughs> Prison education departments to listen to what prisoners want to learn rather than force them into subjects to which they have no interest. Prisons are too target driven, leading to alienation of prisoners. And the second example, I worked as a learning support assistant for four years and it was just a chase for KPTs, that's key performance targets. I've seen staff fiddle exam sheets just to meet their monthly targets even to the extent of inventing students. <laughs> Thirdly, prisoners would like shorter waiting lists and less prison transfers, which are often caused by overcrowding. When you're halfway through a course and you get moved, you should be able to carry it on in prison. Like me, I was doing level two in beauty and level one in customer service. And when I got moved, I got told I could carry on, but I couldn't as there was a waiting list for beauty and no course for customer service. When applying for a course in the education department, you're put on a waiting list. But you're not told you are on the waiting list or how long the waiting list is or where you are on the list. I've been on the waiting list for two and a half years to do a health and safety course. Fourthly, prisoners would like more skilled workshops rather than repetitive, menial, low-skilled work. I've learned nothing from any of them. That's why I left and went on to full-time education. A trained monkey could do the work in there. If workshops are sweatshops, all that delivers is resentment, shoddy work, and prisoners going sick or avoiding work. Lots of prisoners don't know the value of work, so show them. And fifthly, prisoners would like to see more opportunities to volunteer and share their skills with others, because it benefits themselves as well as other prisoners. I have helped with the toe-by-toe -toe learning programme and have been a Samaritan's listener for a while. Both have been rewarding and given me a sense of self-worth and usefulness. I believe there should be more formal recognition and opportunities for inmates <coughs> so inclined to help others. All very articulate responses, but there were also some less articulate but equally uh, valid responses to our survey. <laughs> Just to give you an idea of it. I would change it all because it's shit. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> no, on a serious note, it does indicate the need for improved literacy to enable prisoners to be persuasive and be taken seriously by policy makers and governors about how to influence change in the prison system. And also for them then to go on and use these skills after release to influence change for themselves in their own lives. So, in summary, prisoners through literacy and literature can be upskilled and encouraged to write and express their views about how prison education can be improved so rehabilitation is more likely for themselves and for others. We need to look at ways of developing this so the experiences and suggestions of prisoner learners are heard both on a local level in their prisons but also on a national level by policy makers. I look forward to hearing your thoughts on Learner Voice and any examples you can provide me with where it's working successfully so we can enable prisoners to become part of the solution not part of the problem. Just a quick plug about our e-news. We have a monthly Learning Matters e-news that goes out, um, which goes into lots of um, detail about different things going on in the prison education system. So if you'd like to sign up, you can go to the website or come and speak to myself or Seth. I'm going to leave you with one final, quite poignant quote from a learner voice. Freedom doesn't have to begin when those gates are flung open in the distant future. It can begin now and be found within the pages of a book. Thank you.